Hope everybody's well. Wanted to take you guys with me on a little exploration and a bit of a reading from Daria Dugina's, uh, again, um, eschatological optimism. And we're going to look at kind of the end where we get a an outline of the contours of her thinking. And this section's entitled Philosophy as Destiny. And she puts forth here, or the author puts forth, how Daria understood the noetic ascesis. So this section is entitled Noetic Ascesis, how uh, we are living in a time of the war of minds, the war of minds. She writes, life in the modern world presupposes and even demands of us enormous effort of mind. And not just in everyday affairs and external emotions, but precisely inner intellectual mindful effort, quote unquote, noetic, noetic ascesis as it was called in the monastic tradition of the Holy Fathers. This praxis of the mind, the intellect, is necessary not only for the sake of discriminating, or diakrisis, as Greek Platonists said, that is, for distinguishing one thing from another, the worthy from the worthless, good from evil, the accidental from the fateful, but also from the sake of something that is of much grander scale and significance. We live in a damaged, twisted world in a broken civilization, It's a very backbone. The idea of the vertical, the hierarchy of the supreme is broken. Intellectual effort is needed in order to restore this world to its attuned hierarchical proportions, the very model of which was established by Plato. So her name, her uh, middle name, Daria Platanova, is an homage and and a reflection of her love for Plato. And uh, the next section is entitled The Imperative of Platonism where she writes kind of later on. So she talks about the importance of Plato's, uh, you know, two-sided, two-floored worldview um, and how it's paramount and necessary for the creation of the good, the true, and the beautiful in the world because of this relationship between heaven and earth, between the realm of the forms and the realm of uh, the particulars and how through modernity and post-modernity, there's been a deconstruction of, of Platonic thought. And she really... Um, has read well and focuses on Deleuze and then the object-oriented ontologists um, and then uh, kind of defends a position, a traditionalist position, uh, and from um, kind of an, her orthodox Christian uh, religion as well. Uh, she writes here in, in juxtaposing the time where Socrates was killed for speaking the truth to our global moment right now. She wrote, The path of the intellect is dangerous. People fear the intellect like fire. The city authorities of Athens once executed the most intelligent thinker of Greece and all mankind, Socrates, and the inhabitants of Alexandria murdered the Neoplatonic philosopher Hypatia. Hypatia. Today, the Western global elites have a ferocious and totalitarian hatred for free thinking. They are killing and they intend to kill thinkers, philosophers, wise men, prophets, and geniuses. Anyone thinks about the fates of mankind and is not in unison with the group of villains who have seized modern global discourse and are generally preparing to close the project of the human being to turn man into a clown, a computer, information in the cloud. Daria knew that this rational obscurantism must be resisted first and foremost by the intellect. With thought, idea, concept, design, and project, she chose Platonism as her reference point in this struggle. Why? And then the next section, she goes into this two-floor harmony of Platonism. Uh, So she writes, Plato built a harmonious and coherent two-floor world where ideas, models, and the forms of things and events of the world are on the upper floor, while on the lower dwells matter and things themselves exist by beholding the logo idea, the logi idea, and imitating them as celestial models. This is how the hierarchy of heaven and earth was structured, a hierarchy of ideas, at the head of which shines the idea of the good or the one, that which is inexpressible, ineffable and transcends everything that can and even cannot be thought about it and she goes on there Um, she juxtaposes this neoplatonism with uh, postmodern philosophers uh, Gilles Deleuze and the object-oriented ontologist and she says here uh, but the world decays with time looking at Deleuze uh, and man becomes dumber in one way or another came modernity and after it postmodernity in which we partially dwell today 20th century prophet of postmodernity the french philosopher Gilles Deleuze falsified falsified plato in the margins of his works fundamentally distorting the platonic picture of the world 
Deleuze argues that Platonism does not speak of a dualism of ideas and matter, but of a duality within matter itself, between that which heeds the ideas, copies, and that which eludes the influence of the ideas altogether, hides from them, and evades the influence of the intellectual model, the Logos. So we're bringing in Deleuze's philosophy uh, uh, of the rhizome, um, juxtaposed to the hierarchical structure of a tree, where you have a root and branches. Um, he was putting forth the philosophy of the rhizome of the root, which springs up in random and chaotic ways. There's not a, an inherent logic uh, to this type of thinking. And Daria sees this as this continued de degradation of thinking through the philosophical and postmodern traditions of the 20th, 21st century. Uh, let's see if I can... Um, So I'm going to read now from um, this last section. It's entitled The um, Awakening of the Angel. This will give kind of an idea of a potential answer. Now, uh, Daria, doesn't, Daria Dugina doesn't have an explicit formulated answer to the questions posed by uh, the degradation of society and postmodernity, but she really dials in on the question and, and on the decision that needs to be made um, as we dwell in these postmodern degrading times, there's a decision point. And here, from this section here, we're going to look how we are. Um, she juxtaposes man's role right now in the future of humanity as akin to the angels in their uh, hesitation to make a decision which casts them down to earth, she writes. Dario followed, um, so in his fall and in the conditions of the modern world, Man must somehow face a choice similar to the one that the angels were once offered to make, to become warriors in the ranks of the Archangel Michael or to serve the serpent, Satan. There is a Gnostic myth cited by Saron, which describes how the angels hesitated in their decision at the crucial moment and were thus cast down to earth to be allowed to make their decision at a later time. These angels, having lost their memory of their immaculate past, walk the earth in the conditions of entropy and degradation, finding themselves in an increasingly confused state of mind. Nevertheless, they must make their decision without instructions, prompts, and hints, showing only pure will and radical volunteerism. Such a will has, as Russian traditionalists call it, a post-sacral character, i.e. it does not guarantee any positive outcome in the end, but it suggests that at the very moment of its manifestation, in the moment of quote-unquote decision-making, a metamorphosis happens to man, the rupture of level, to use Evola's term, and then man becomes non-human, something other than himself, and he discovers within himself the dimension of the angel. Or if he is wrong, he will stumble and be cast down into the demonic ranks of the adversary. According to Saron, man can and must, and this is his only chance, go beyond his limits and transgress his insufficient state, a state which the 20th century utopian theorist Ernest Bloch called nach nicht sin, or not yet being, with reference to Martin Heidegger's concept of eternally self-withholding being. Daria saw this transgression of the human being as a person's passage to their own, not own higher inner human like a trail to the throne of their eye, their altar, their secret room, the center of their active intellect, that is the supra-individual instance along the vertical linking the human being with the hierarchies of the spirit. The Rhineland mystics wrote about this, Alexander Dugan reflects on this in his Noamachia, and Daria also thought about the human being in the same mode. She understood that a transformed human being is one who affirms their point of support in the supreme, the fundamental, in that which transcends the rational and the human. She thought of the transformed person as a special type of human being who, was, who has transfigured their individual stock by mastering their highest properties, their collective, creative, intellectual potential, the fullness of their intellect and the strength of their will. This is the radical subject in the spirit of the new metaphysics discussed by Russian traditionalists, who understands his place among the metaphysical ruins without support and roots, where the only foundation that remains is his own awakened higher consciousness, illuminated by the transcendental axis present in his very core. 
in the light of which becomes Dasein, genuine, quote-unquote, here being, aspiring towards the other. This human metamorphosis, Dari always emphasized in her texts and lectures, takes place in the modern world in toxic conditions. Philosophers describe it through the mechanism of turning poison into medicine, plunging into the regions of ketonic chaos, working in black, in alchemical transcription. As a clash of two universal principles, the battle between the Apollonian and the Sibylian, the meaning of which is the test of the heroic subject and the transformation of his inner being. Seeing through this perspective, it becomes clear why Daria paid special attention to those forms of human existence they anticipate inner transformation, such as the, quote, life in danger, Friedrich Nietzsche, being without shelter and the risk of all risks, Martin Heidegger, total mobilization, Ernst Junger, the political soldier or theological soldier, Ernest Junger and Jadar Dismal. In other words, that which anticipates everything capable of resisting the quote-unquote naked life, that animal self-identity which, according to Giorgio Agamben, turns a person into an agent of his needs alone. And the last short section here is entitled Guardians of the Vertical. Dari was very sensitive to the space that is opposite to the angelic perspective of the human being, to the landscape of the Aleutian marshes, the dark Sibylline fabric of modern culture. She read her full of gloomy Saran, was fascinated with subversive Deleuze and the Armonic Negrasante. But she always remains and will remain eternally a true knight of the vertical, of meaning. She was a real luminous guardian philosopher. This is what Plato called philosophers, for they defend the most high that a person has, their intellectual dignity, thought, intellect, the right to freely understand and choose to be human. She guarded the right of the personality and the people to not surrender their positions in preserving their ethical pillars and intellectual principles and defending the unique cultural code of their homeland, their civilization. After all, they keep the human dream of ascending the ladder of contemplating the higher principles. They provide access to what in Platonism is called light, truth, justice, beauty, the good, and the good. This book, um, Eschatological Optimism, was assembled out of her Daria Dugina's philosophical and historical texts, articles, speeches, presentations, parts of her thesis, and her unfinished dissertation. In this book, as well as in Daria's diary, The Depth and Heights of My Heart, which has recently been released by the publishing house ACT, we became witness to how painfully the battle against the swamps of the illusory freedom of the great mother Sybil is ongoing in contemporary philosophy in the minds of the modern, psych modern people, youth, and in the soul of a young girl. We become witness to how philosophical attunement is first born, how spiritual turmoil and disappointments come to a head, and how painfully philosophical bearings of support are acquired. We notice how the light wings of a debutting philosopher grow, how thought cuts through chaos with concepts, how thought suffocates and comes to life again in extreme ascent, inevitably colliding with what with, with Deleuze's, quote, line where reason and madness, life and death, play with one another. And that's the end. So let me know what you guys think. Until next time, God bless you.